So basically, I think that uh, I want to talk about um, our training center, which is part of the Vaticuti Foundation network, and also about what we were doing uh, in it. So first of all, we have started in uh, 2010. It is a non-profit society, uh, which offers, uh, the mission is to offer high quality training, exposure, and R&D in minimal invasive therapies, and of course, also in robotics. We have two main partners. First of all, my hospital, DORV, who is doing robotic surgery since 2000. And so we were one of the first robotic centers in Europe, having done an experience of over 3,500 cases. And we have a multi-specialty care pathway for robotic surgery. Uh, our second partner is uh, the Vaticuti Foundation Network. And uh, I have to thank Dr. Bandari, but also Mr. and Mrs. Vaticuti for the, the trust and for their efforts to, uh, to help us to uh, to get what we are today. Um, for us, training is very important. The human body is not the, uh, training, uh, the ideal training module. So we have seen that also the, the hours we need to get things done to train, the learning curve is far too long. So are there ways to get this down? And I think if we achieve this, this will be uh, in favor for our patients. So to succeed, we, have, we need modern equipped uh, training centers. So we, want, we want to structure training, and also we want to attract top experts to give training. So in our facility today, we have three SI systems. An XI system is coming in a few months. We have Firefly, Vessel Sealer, etc. But we also have four simulators, and we have all training models available. We want to combine, combine the uh, training in the lab with uh, live surgery with case observations and um, and basically we have also we are also doing science we have a scientific scientific director in orsi which is uh, professor novara from the padua uh, padova in university in italy and basically we are coordinating several prospective multi-center studies one of them is known by all of you is about the the, the partial nephrectomy a study prospectively that we started just right now. We want to give training to all levels because it's not only the console surgeon that matters, but also the whole team. So it is important when you think about robotic training to train the full team. So basically, when we give training, we want to do it modularly. We don't want to kill a pig immediately. I think we first have to learn it on the simulator, which has been explained already by Prokar and also by Kurshit. So uh, there are um, uh, now several um, training models available in uh, and different simulator systems. And when we go one step further, we can basically do the same thing, but live using this skill drills, drills uh, method. So with uh, dead materials, uh, you can basically uh, do the same thing as in um, as we do in um, simulators. So the next step is uh, once we master this, we can go to other things in, um, in simulators. One of the examples is this, uh, is this um, uh, Venezuelan chicken. So it's actually a Belgian chicken, but it has a stomach and a rectum. And basically, this is absolutely perfect model to copy, let's say, the urethrovesical anastomosis after having done a radical prostatectomy. So this costs only three euros, and uh, so it is very easy to do and a very good training model. The next step is then to work with, um, with uh, pigs, because uh, I think that at the end of your training, it's important to have live tissue to work on in the lab. And so the last things we do is um, on a pig model, which is anesthetized. Then we have also the possibility to give uh, tr cadaver training. Cadaver training is uh, very useful for some uh, specific um, uh, procedures, like, for example, radical prostatectomy. Here you see um, somebody getting the bladder down in a, in a cadaver. And now he has freed there the uh, prostate. And uh, basically, 
he is starting to create the veil of Aphrodite um, and to spare, to do a uh, nurse pair in this case. Um, as told, we combine this with live surgery um, and uh, therefore I think it's very useful to have a dual system available and um, so. So the facility is now in a very old form, uh, but when you look inside, it's quite modern. And um, uh, here you see uh, an image of uh, our training center. Uh, when we have done in 2012, um, uh, we started, it was mainly urological training, but when we look at 2014, we are doing the whole scale of uh, training, not only urology, but also in all the other specialties. And when uh, we look at uh, the nationalities, only 15% of the people trained today come from Belgium, or less than 10%, even 8% to be exact in this year. And uh, also the numbers have risen exponentially every year. So now, last year only, in 2014, we have trained about 250 surgeons in Orsi. But uh, we want to evolve and we want to get uh, further, so we will double the capacity by the end of the year and we will have also an audio audiovisual facil facilities and a new auditorium available. But we want to get further and we are thinking on building a new building uh, which would be in modular fashion in order to be able to create a super modern uh, training center uh, which will be uh, very easily accessible while Brussels is the center of Europe and every major city in Europe has a direct flight and also from Delhi actually. Um, but uh, then we come to the next step and this is uh, with ERUS, the EAU robotic urology section uh, which uh, Prokar is also a member of the board. I think we've done uh, a quite nice study uh, on a robotic curriculum and it started in 2013 with 10 fellows in 10 institutions. And actually this was the first validated robotic curriculum in the world. So 10 centers uh, um, did participate, of course uh, ours, but also the ones of uh, Prokar and uh, eight other ones throughout Europe. The first uh, fellowship program was about three months training. So basically at day one there was a basic skills assessment and uh, then there was uh, uh, three weeks of uh, skill development with bedside assistance and case observations. While uh, the, the, the uh, trainees could train also on that materials. Then there was one week of modular training in the lab where they have very intensive technical but also non-technical skills training. And there was an assessment the day they started with, the, with this uh, lab training and at the end of it. And then there was uh, two months of console modular training. And at the end of it, they had to do, they had to record a robotic case which was blindly reviewed. Now with our program, we extended it to six months. Uh, basically, when we have a short, brief look at the results, you can see that of all uh, 10 participants, when uh, they, they evaluated, um, when the, the recorded case was evaluated, we saw that in three of them it was insufficient, and we compared these uh, 10 uh, recorded cases with two cases done by experts, so that we have a repair point to compare. Um, and when we had the evaluations of the fellows, you see that they were out outstanding, that uh, they were all very, very, very happy, and uh, they quoted this um, fellowship as extremely important. So as I told you, we, uh, we did then pilot study two, we are now doing uh, pilot study three, and um, uh, basically um, the, the big difference with pilot study one is that it is now six months, and now we also have uh, the number of cases of each step to have to be done. You must know that uh, Dr. Stolzenberg has divided uh, this uh, robotic prostatectomy in 12 different steps with all the different uh, degree of, um, of uh, difficulty. And basically, this is quoted how many cases they should do. And that's how, uh, so I'm very proud that at this year's EAU Congress, 
we will be able, as IRUS, to pre present our European robotic training pathways. And um, our mission was to join forces on national, but also on European and worldwide level, and offer uh, fellows a validated, certified EAU robotic curriculum. So basically, we have the IBRUS, which is um, an online uh, theoretical course. Then we will have the basic skills. And when you have the first two, you could have, this is called the basic course. The advanced course is when you do also the advanced skills training. And then we have the curriculum, which is uh, combined with the, the fellowship, as I uh, explained to you. So basically, the basic robotic skill course will be one to three, three days. And um, it will uh, comprise theoretical training, but also hands-on training on the simulator and eventually the dry lab, also on the non-technical skills training. And once you have this uh, done, you will have to do some examinations and in order to get the basic robotic skills certificate. And this could be important for the residents to start before they start with bedside assistance, etc. Then we will come to the advanced training, which basically will be the five days training. And this is the modular training in the lab, where you will do uh, hands-on simulator training, dry lab training, wet lab training, and also some live case observations. And this is finished with the uh, training, with the fellowship. And when you have all these three, then you can get the EAU robotic curriculum certificate. So um, uh, to conclude, I believe that uh, the EAU robotic curriculum is the first validated robotic curriculum there is. There is the opportunity to certify physicians on a scientific way and refining and agreement uh, for recertification will be needed in the future. And I believe that all of this ex is extremely important <coughs> for our patients. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you.